Hi there, um, I'm Philip Locke. I'm here to talk to you about uh, Bootstrap and uh, how to create a rapid prototype. A um, little bit about me first. Um, I started using content management systems back oh, 1998. Uh, back in that time it was uh, very much uh, a bespoke uh, CMS that I was using um, and I was consulting for a company who used to charge the client um, anything upwards of a hundred thousand dollars a year uh, just for the licensing per year uh, that didn't include support or anything at all uh, back in 2002 stroke 3 I came across this wonderful thing that was free it was called Mambo um, and that's the last time I ever worked for a client um, and charged them a license fee for their CMS. Um, like everybody else, um, I moved across um, very early um, to Joomla 1.0 back in 2005 or such. Um, everything I do now, I try and advocate um, open source. It's the way to go. Uh, to go. Um, you know, the, the UK is is grabbing hold of it and have been for the last couple of years now, um, especially government institutes. Um, I'm an ex-OSM board member. Um, I was the capital committee chair, so I was in uh, in charge of looking after sponsorships, getting money in, um, and uh, also involved in a lot of uh, conversations about uh, you know the good things, the bad things that happen in Joomla. Um, primarily, I'm a front-end developer. Um, I do code uh, extensions, but uh, my preference is working with the client on uh, templating and um, you know getting a great website up and running. Um, hopefully you'll be saying this uh, a little bit later once you've seen me do a rapid prototype and you know you start playing with Bootstrap yourself. Um, so why is Bootstrap so awesome? Um, just a little bit of history. Um, it was um, launched by a couple of guys um, from Twitter, uh, a guy called Mark Otto and Jacob Thornton, um, absolute uber geeks. Um, follow them on Twitter. I'm sure you'll have a have a giggle. Um, th they launched it back in uh, August 2011 um, as a really a grid system. Um, it's changed um, a lot since then to be uh, responsive, and fairly recently, um, in September this year. Um, the two guys left Twitter um, to go their, their sort of like their separate ways, uh, uh, new ventures and what have you. Um, but Bootstrap um, still exists, okay, and um, it will continue to grow. And um, you know, Mark and Jacob uh, will both be involved heavily in it. Um, so, what is Bootstrap? Bootstrap um, uses um, the latest um, technologies. Um, it uses HTML5, CSS3, um, and uh, one of my favourites is uh, Less um, for creating uh, CSS on the fly. Um, so you know everything is looked after. You know typography, buttons, you know the grid system, which is superb, uh, and they have some great JavaScript. Um, it's uh, so good that um, you know, and I'm really, really grateful that this has happened. Um, but we've just launched uh, Joomla 3, which uh, the back end now is is Bootstrap, you know, which is wonderful. So I can sit downstairs in the evening, um, you know, watching the TV and editing my uh, my websites via my iPad or even my ob uh, mobile phone, which is fantastic. Um, it's it's a front end toolkit for you know, and was set up primarily to rapidly prototype uh, websites. Um, it's not the only thing it will do, but it gets you there quicker. Um, a lot of people um, used to say to me, um, you know, I charge an extra 25% for doing responsive web designs. Um, I actually say to the contrary, um, I actually can create a responsive web design with, uh, with Bootstrap and you know, my framework that I use, which is Dewstrap, um, I, I can create a website um, a lot quicker 
Uh, and I'm going to show you that a little bit later by creating you know, a rapid prototype that we can go to a client um, for sign off. Um, so in, effen in essence, it, it makes our lives um, so much easier. Uh, and it empowers um, the, the likes of you and me to you know, really get projects out the door quickly and efficiently um, by using code that you know, I personally, because I, you know, I, I've created Juicestrap um, and I use Juicestrap for every single client, um, you know, I know the code um, and I can quickly get things out the door. I know it's going to work and I know they're going to be happy. Um, a lot of people, uh, you know, some time ago, and, and still a few today, say, you know, I can tell a bootstrap website a million miles away. Um, of course you can. You know, if, if you leave it um, and just use the base CSS that bootstrap uh, gives us, yeah, you know, they all will look the same. They might be laid out in the grid differently, but they'll all look the same. Um, with Juicestrap, the template that I use, okay, um, you know what I always say to people using it is never touch the Bootstrap CSS or the or the JavaScript, okay? Because um, Bootstrap has always been updated. You know bug fixes and you know uh, new bits and pieces. Um, don't touch it, okay? So we can always update that. Uh, what I do is I have a uh, custom CSS file which is loaded last, um, and with that custom CSS file we can overwrite. Um, or add any new CSS classes, but we can also overwrite anything um, in the Bootstrap CSS. Um, at the end of the day, it is just CSS, okay? So, you know, that's what makes it so easy to work with. Um, just a couple of websites um, that I'm, I'm working on at this moment in time or, or have finished. This, this is one for uh, an, an educational authority um, up in uh, the, the, the north of the UK. Uh, another one for uh, the uh, local tourism um, uh, partnership up in Scotland. Um, here's one done by uh, one of my my guys, um, which, as you can see, doesn't look like Juicestrap at all. Uh, another one here, you know, we we can have them as minimalistic as you want. You know, as I say, you know, it is you know Bootstrap is just a uh, a grid system with some great CSS and JavaScript behind the scenes that, that we can use or not use. Um, it's just CSS and it's as simple as that. This is one that I'm working on just at this moment in time um, and what um, we're, we're going to have at the end of the day um, all of these hexagons will actually move and shuffle around as you go down through smaller devices. Um, so when you get down to a, an iPhone size uh, mobile device, um, the, the menu will change. Okay, so it you know it'll be the you know the typical sort of um, button that you can click on and, and the menu will drop down. The hexagons will be in in two columns nicely. Um, the bits of paper which um, is, is pure CSS, um, you know, CSS3, okay, all readable by Google, all of the text, uh, will all resize, um, it'll be great, uh, and it'll be a, a nice little showcase um, for, uh, for myself. Okay, so what are we going to do? Uh, next, I'm going to quickly um, show you via the browser um, how, using Bootstrap and the grid system, we can quick, very quickly um, knock up a rapid prototype and I'm you know I'm not talking days I'm not talking hours I'm, I'm talking more minutes okay so that once we've decided what the layout should be with a client okay we can either go away or actually just you know pop into reception and quickly knock it up so that we can then go back to the client get sign off on the on the layout and how things um, should work um, and move forward and just do the CSS okay to make it look not like bootstrap uh, this, this is the wireframe that we're, uh, we're we're going to knock up in the browser okay it looks quite busy but um, when, when I show you the the, the finished website afterwards um, you'll see why they have so many positions and so many bits and pieces 
Right, let's make a start. Okay, uh, three tabs open here in my browser. Uh, this one here shows my layout. It's just a, a, the, a copy of the mock-up image. Okay, I've got my administrator and I've got a blank juice strap template. Okay, so the first thing we want to do is uh, just to add a couple of menu items so that we can um, demo those in the finished template. So let's create a couple. Okay, so demo link one. Another one. Demo link two. Okay, so we've just got a couple of links here just to show uh, showing the prototype when we're finished. Okay, so if we go to the uh, menu manager now, uh, sorry, module manager. Okay, we are going to just uh, grab a module just to show the uh, the top navigation. Okay, we want to hide the uh, module title. We're just going to pop this in the top nav. Okay, show on all pages and save. Okay, so if we go back do a refresh on the actual template now, we can see up at the top we have some links. Um, next to do is uh, we want to create these modules here for the logo and strap line, the telephone and button. Uh, because it's a grid, what we're going to be doing is adding all of these modules into the same module position, but we're going to be spacing them out with spans. So let's create our first one. Um, as this is just a prototype, I'm just going to use a custom HTML. I'm not going to start putting in, um, you know, logo images or, or anything like that um, and I want to place this in my above uh, position okay let's just uh, grab that okay as I said we're just going to uh, put this one as a span 6 okay because we want it to be half the width of the 12 column bootstrap grid and save that Okay, we'll create uh, another one for our uh, telephone. And put that in exactly the same position. But this time we're going to give it a span of um, three. And the last one on that row is our button. Uh, this is the, the button over on the right hand side here, which is again going to be a span 3. Again in the above position, and we'll give it a span of 3 and save that. Just need to make sure they're in the right order so we'll reorder these so we want our logo as number one, our telephone number two and our button number three. Okay so let's do a refresh. Okay there we go so we have our first row here Okay, the next row we want to create is our slideshow and our image. Um, different spacing again. I'm going to space the um, slideshow as a span 8 and the image as a span 4. Um, but we're actually going to be putting it into the same position. Okay, so we need to add something a little bit different because um, because this is uh, all in the above position, and this is going to be in the above position as well. Um, this is going to have to, uh, the slideshow is going to have to wrap. 
Um, now we have to add something different to the uh, spam because if we don't we'll get a margin on the left hand side here because it thinks it's you know just to the right of the button. So let's add this slideshow. I'm just going to add a bit of padding there in, in the uh, not padding, sorry, a bit of text there just to you know make the module a bit deeper. Okay, so the difference here is that because we're going on to a second row and we don't want that margin on the left, okay, we're adding this class here, which is first, just before the span, so that um, it knows to take away the margin. Okay, and our next one is our image. Because we've made this one a span 8, we're going to make this one a span of 4. Okay, so... Image. In the above position. a little bit deeper. This one we can just put as span 4 because it's not the first on the second row. So if we just save that and we'll number them or put them in the right uh, order and save. So if we do a refresh now we can see we have our slideshow and we have our image uh, span on the right hand side. Okay, next on the list is our briefing and our blog listings. I'm actually going to put these in the right position. Um, I've already gone into the uh, Jewstrap template uh, parameters. We can actually set the, the left and the right positions to be a certain amount of columns. Um, so we can have them as three or four or two, whatever we want. I've set them as uh, four on the right-hand side just at the moment. So this one is our... Ooh, can't type. Is our briefing. I'm going to put that on the right-hand side. And let's just uh, put some text in here just to make the module a little bit deeper. We don't have to put a span uh, in the module suffix, uh, module class suffix, as uh, we've already set that in the uh, template parameters. So if we go back, do a refresh, we can see we've got our briefing now on the right hand side here. Okay, we need to add the next one, which is the blog listings. So again, custom HTML, blog listings on the right hand side, or in the right positions. Just make it a little bit deeper. Again, we don't have to put a, a module class suffix uh, span in there. Okay, so we can see now that uh, we've got our two right hand, uh, right module position um, modules. Okay, next on our list is the um, call to actions and the three down at the bottom here. Uh, this whole area here to the left of the right position is our component position. So uh, with these, what we can actually do is uh, we can still treat this as a 12 grid position here. Um, because got a little bit of whizzy uh, stuff in, uh, in the template that um, ignores the right hand side with a view to um, the columns and we can still work on a 12 grid position um, inside the component. So we're going to make the CTA 3, 3, 3, 3 equivalent to 12. So let's add those now. 
again custom HTML module CTA1 I'm going to put those in the above content position and as I said I want to give this a span of three because we're going to have four of them so span three okay just going to cheat here and I am going to duplicate that one a further three times so let's just go in and change this now to CTA 2 publish it we've already set the uh, the span here the cl uh, module class Suffolk so we'll leave that alone and we'll just save it okay let's do our next one which is going to be number three and we set it to publish and save and the last one number four publish and save just want to put these in the right order so we want CTA 1 as number 1, 2 as number 2, 3 and 4. Let's just save that. Do a refresh and we can see that our prototype is taking shape. Okay, next on the list are the three just below the call to actions success stories, featured articles, and press. Uh, again, you know, this is uh, a width of 12 columns in this area. Um, so we're going to do a four, a four, and a four. <clears throat> so this is success stories. I'm going to put this one in the below content position. And with a span four. We've got three of them, so four threes, twelve. Okay, and my next one is featured articles, so I'm just going to cheat again, make a copy of these. featured articles publish and we've already again because I've, I've just made a duplicate we've uh, we've got the span in there already okay and my last one which is called press and I can't type publish and save just want to make sure that these are in the right order so we've got um, what do we have Right, so success stories first, featured articles second, and press third. Okay, let's do a refresh back on the website. 
OK, looking good. So our last ones are our footers and copyrights. So let's quickly do the footers. So footer one. I want that, would you believe, in the footer position? If I could spell. And this is 100% width of the site. Okay, the 12 columns in this uh, particular position. So we're going to do a 3 3 3 span all the way across. So if we do a span. Span three. Okay, and again, just to save a bit of time, I'm just going to duplicate uh, three more of those. Let's just go in and change those. Span two. Publish it. Don't need to set the spam because we've already uh, got it in there by doing our duplication. And change this one to number three. Publish. Save. And our last one, which is four publish and save we we'll just make sure they're in the right order which they are not so we want one two three four save that let's do a refresh and there we go we have our four positions down at the bottom for our footers and the last one is our copyright which goes 100% across the bottom so nice and easy okay copyright and we're going to put that would you believe in the copyright position We're actually not going to put a span in here um, because if we don't put a span, it will just stretch 100% across the 12, um, 12 columns. So let's just save that. Okay, go back, do a refresh, and would you believe we've got a copyright all along the bottom? So I think that looks pretty good. Okay, good enough for uh, for demo into the client. Okay, the great thing about uh, Bootstrap and also my, my Juicestrap template is that not only does this work, okay, we, we could have added a, you know, a couple of pages in here for the demo links and what have you, um, but it is also responsive. Okay, so as you can see, everything is just falling nicely into the right position, okay, and also our... menu works here okay uh, another great thing about um, bootstrap is that um, what we can do we can actually hide um, certain things so for example uh, a lot of people don't like slideshows on mobiles if you don't want it you know we can hide it and say don't show it for um, you know mobile devices or mobile and iPad just show it on the desktop um, and all that is is purely another um, suffix uh, module class suffix so for example let's go to the slideshow here and we can just put in another module suffix called hidden uh, 
phone. Do a save on that. So if we do a refresh on the website now, okay, we can see that the slideshow is here for desktop. But hey, it's disappeared when we get down to mobile phone size. We still retain the, the logo, the telephone, the button, the image, but the slideshow disappears. Easy as that. So there you have it, the finished template uh, that we've just prototyped up, uh, styled, custom modules, slideshow, etc, etc. You can visit this particular website at um, anchorus.com um, on your desktop, your iPad, your mobile phone. It's totally responsive. Uh, it's quite a busy website. Uh, they're a Google partner and have a lot to say. Great thing about Bootstrap and Juicestrap is that I use it exactly the same way every single time I do a prototype. Um, it's very, very quick. Um, you get used to the code very, very quickly. Um, once you're used to it, you know, it's just, you know, putting spans in place and um, just CSS. Um, it's the way that I'm hoping a lot of people will go. Um, because you know we can all talk the same language like we all talk the same Joomla language we could all talk the same templating language uh, my aims are not as it says here my aims are to not say awesome anymore I get told off by my kids all the time anyway um, time for questions I think <laughs>